Hi, this is Rob McLean from Learn to Cruise Online. The fourth episode in our Connected Boat series deals with the Automated Identification System, or AIS. We're highlighting AIS in this series because even though recreational boaters are not required to use AIS, its potential to cr increase situation awareness on the water is so cost effective that you should seriously consider it if you aren't already using it. AIS technology enables transmitting and receiving coded messages on two designated VHF channels that identify vessels and provide information about their course and speed. Starting in 2008, regulations came into force in Canada requiring that most larger vessels be equipped with AIS transmitting equipment. Similar regulations apply in the US and other countries. In the last 10 years, the cost of AIS equipment has dropped dramatically, and VHF radios that are capable of displaying AIS data can now be purchased for less than around 250 Canadian. As background, there are various types of AIS systems available. First, we need to differentiate between transponders that both transmit and receive AIS data and receivers that only process incoming signals. In the transponder category on the left, we can further distinguish between Class A devices that are regarded as pro equipment intended to be installed on larger vessels that are required by regulation to have AIS on board and lower cost Class B devices that are available for vessels that are not required to carry AIS equipment but voluntarily decide to do so. Within both categories, we can differentiate among standalone systems that include a display and black box systems that process the data and put it on the boat's network for display by other devices. And thirdly, increasingly we're starting to see AIS functionality built into other devices such as VHF radios and chart plotters. AIS is a natural for VHF radios because the radios already process VHF frequencies and already have a display. So the incremental cost of adding AIS functionality is relatively small. AIS data is transmitted vessel to vessel, but there are also shore stations that monitor AIS data and send it out through the internet. An organization known as ShipFinder offers a website and mobile device apps that display AIS feeds. It's fascinating to zoom in on the English Channel, for instance, and marvel at the concentration of commercial traffic going in and out of Europe and the UK. Initially, I was also amazed at how much information was available by clicking on the symbol for a particular vessel. In addition to ShipFinders, there are many other similar apps uh, available that can display public AIS data. Once you have AIS data on your boat's network, you can consume it in a variety of ways. Many chart plotters accept it. Uh, many PC-based charting applications can display it. There are various tablet uh, mobile device apps that can display AIS data such as uh, Vesper's Watchmate app, which is depicted in the diagram. Many VHF radios can display AIS data. And in addition, most AIS display devices can be configured to sound an alarm if a vessel's closest point of approach, or CPA, is lower than a defined value that you can select. Importantly, some AIS devices have the ability to detect a crew overboard situation if someone wearing a personal AIS beacon goes overboard. We'll talk more about this in a subsequent episode. It's also valuable to know that increasingly AIS black box devices do more than process AIS. Pictured on the left is a Vesper device that we installed in Interlude. In addition to being an AIS transponder, it incorporates GPS, 
repeats 0183 and NMEA 2000 data over the network and Wi-Fi and has man overboard closest point of appro approach and anchor alarms. The digital yacht device pictured on the right is receive only but similarly acts as a NMEA 0183 and N2K repeater over the network and Wi-Fi. There are many similar devices available. These, these are the ones that I have direct experience with. In conclusion, given the increasingly low incremental cost of AIS receive technology, it's hard to justify not including it in your plans. It's really nice to know exactly where the freighters are and where they are heading, particularly at night. In our situation, given our planned future adventures for interlude, we like the thought that our AIS transponder means that most vessels bigger than us will be able to see us coming from a minimum of 20 miles away. This concludes Episode 4. We'll see you on the next screencast.